YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got something new for you today. Ready to fly from Volantix. Everything with the four AA batteries and then the adapter that goes to the wall outlet for the USB charger. We got ours with three 400 milliamp 1S batteries. Excuse me, 400 milliamp 1S batteries. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna be Volantix throwing their hat in the ring. Ours also came with two two bladed props and two four bladed props. Really sweet looking obsession. Yes, it says obsession on both sides, which is funny because Esteban, my buddy, and I used to have an obsession, 750 millimeters. One of the worst planes we ever flew and it was hilarious because that was a long time ago. So we'll see if this thing breaks the trend for the obsessive P-51. All right, we're in beginner mode, which is the only mode you can pretty much fly these in. Most of the time, I hope I'm wrong. Full throttle. Yes! Oh yeah, oh, well, it's doing good. It's a good start. Okay, so slowing down my throttle. Obviously the auto leveling is getting that thing under control right away. It feels pretty good. We're not dead calm, but we're looking pretty good for wind. And as you can see, beautiful clouds up there helping to get this job done for filming. Oh yeah. Squishy tires, which we've seen on the most recent 400 millimeters that we've done, 400 millimeter offerings, of course, have been around for a long time. Good throttle range on this, I'm just gonna say, it actually doesn't fall out of the sky immediately when I lower the stick, I like that. That's something we haven't seen. Okay, I'm gonna try the one-touch aerobatics here coming up. Okay, one-touch and then pull back. Woohoo! almost didn't make it that time because I'm at low altitude, plus I'm kinda going with the wind. Okay, full throttle and roll. There you go, got a nice roll there. Now I'm gonna come back toward us, pressing the one touch and roll the other way. So good execution. We've seen worse, but honestly it feels a lot like what we've seen. Now it really holds it level, level, level. So I definitely don't think that's a problem. I love the bright. Oh mm -hmm. no, we crashed, Megan. Oh no. That's how bad Ooh. that was, guys. It's like it never even happened. But I love the bright livery. It's uh, yeah. easy to see. Even up in the clouds, we definitely have good visibility. All right, so I wanna see what the middle mode looks like, because obviously we're limited to this on up and this down, and this rolled to the right and rolled to the left. You have limited bank angles. We'll go to the right this time. Now, as we come back to ourselves, I'm gonna get over the tree line of bushes. I'm gonna go to middle. Now here's middle lots of beeping involved. It does let you go in a loop, so that's pretty cool, I, but you can't roll it on the roll axis, okay, as you can see. Okay, so here we go, full throttle and pulling back on the stick. Oh, it uh, just kind of did weird things. Okay, watch, back on the stick. Oh yeah, you just gotta have enough inertia to get over the top of your loop. Now I'm gonna go to advanced expert mode. For expert pilots only, Brian Phillips RC, obviously. Now it looks like the drunken pilot because the center of gravity is probably a little bit too, too heavy. As you can see, it's sort of a hard one to fly. But you can do that, which is awesome. And you can do this, which is fun. And then you can rudder over if you want. Now I gotta say, if you guys, okay, now we're back in beginner. Sorry, that was getting to be a little too much for me. <laughs> um, all I'm gonna say is, yeah, it can be done. I'm not gonna do it. Because to be honest with you, if I wanted to fly a more controllable plane, I would need to add some weight to this nose if I wanted to make it controllable. Because I think it's just straight up tail heavy. That's not unusual on these 400 millimeter warbirds. And we've seen it before, we'll see it again. Let's see if we can land without looking like a fool. Out of the throttle, just gliding it in. A little bit of throttle, there you go. Oh wow. yeah, that was That's sweet. Now, not a steerable tailwheel here, but if you kind of give it throttle, it'll get that tailwheel up, and so you can fly. Oh my goodness. What, did you think I was gonna crash? <laughs> why Why would you, you think, think I you would crash? crash? <laughs> I never crash. Oh no, except for just then. I was supposed to demonstrate how awesome this pro- oh, Whoa, no. that just fell. Holy cow. It was like a minute later. So guys, this is supposed to be a demo of how you'll never break a prop ever. Fortunately, they gave us, they, they gave us 
spares. But I just wanna show you how easy this is to clip back on here. First of all, I'm just gonna break this. Man, that's hard to break, goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that so it gets more balanced. And now we're gonna fly with this. That, that looks perfect, yep. doesn't it? I've oh, never broken a prop a problem, worse in my life. Let's hand launch this thing. Look, props all over the Jeez. place. By the way, this is smaller than the two-bladed prop, but I like that because when you get up onto the mains, you don't hit your prop on the ground. Okay, so full throttle. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, there it goes, flying just fine actually. About 50% throttle now. Actually feels great, no problem. Still have the beautiful painted tips. You know, I like those painted tips. Mm -hmm. So guys, if you wanna get a fun 400 millimeter, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. When the wind blows behind you, it makes a difference on the flight characteristics. I can definitely say that. But yeah, guys, this, uh, this is pretty much what you expect with the 400 millimeter Warbird. So Volantix, good job. I'm not gonna say that this is anything extraordinary compared to what we've seen in the past, but I definitely can say that it looks a little nicer than what we've seen in the past. Let's go ahead about four steps toward the runway, please. Good job, right there, right there. There you go. Keep going toward the runway. There you go, right there. Thank you. So guys, if you wanna get one of these and help support us, all you gotta do is follow the links in the video description below. And you can have one for your very own going over head again. Just try not to break your prop on the first flight like a moron. But at the end of the day, you've got four of them included. And yes, there is a screwdriver with a screw, or excuse me, there is a screw in the spinner. They did not provide a screwdriver on this one, not that I care, because oh. I've got 400 of those weird right. Chinese ones. But there is a screw that holds the spinner on, so you can actually service the prop if you decided you wanted to take out the prop from the spinner and possibly put in some sort of an aftermarket option. I don't know that there really is a great option for that beyond ordering them from places like RC going or wherever the link takes you. So my suggestion is if you're a brand new pilot, don't worry, you probably won't break your props every time you crash like I did because I sort of was doing that on purpose. And the truth is it's pretty easy to land. I gotta it say, is. I'm like really impressed with how easy it is to land. And it takes off nice too. Now it does have you locked in pretty hard on the auto leveling, okay? Woo, cutting the grass. But I don't think it's anything too especially terrible. So yeah, guys, if you wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, just order one for yourself from the links in the video description. And if you're curious about other planes that we've tried to crash into our face, all you have to do is look no further than brianphillipsrc.com. That's our domain. So check it out. And it's spelled just like my name in the YouTube channel. B-R-I-A-N. Guys, Brian, the correct way. <laughs> Sorry to all you Y spelled Brians out there. But that being said, when you get there, you can check it out. And you can check out other competitive offerings if you don't like this particular one. Also, they offer this in two liveries and then they have, I believe, an F4U Corsair, which comes in two liveries, but the liveries are super similar. Mm -hmm. This one actually has the red and silver variant as well. And that one looks a little bit like the 1.5 that we just did, not 1.45 meter offering from FMS we did just not too long ago. So very cool P51. Oh, and by the way, the two-bladed bigger prop is gonna give you more high-end speed, a little bit bigger performance. Let's do another one-touch button loop. That is so cool. And it just does it itself. It's the, it's the most stupid feature that I originally thought. And then I got it and I'm like, hey, it's kind of fun actually. And it's gonna help a beginner pilot. You know, somebody that really wants to see a barrel roll. All you gotta do is get your speed, kind of get it where you want it. So you got lots of room, press the button, and then roll that thing. Woo! So cool. And I can't believe it's been a long flight too. Yeah. What are we at for time? 9.53. Jeez! 10 minutes on a little 400 milliamp hour 1S. Well, that... you did 
change the prop. So that took you. Oh yeah, less, true. But like less than a minute. Yeah, but did you hear that beeping? I swear that's got to be something like. Or am I middle mode? I'm gonna go to middle mode again. It beeped on me there. Yes, you can go and do loops on your own in middle mode. So is the only difference between middle mode and beginner the is that you can that you pull can into it? a loop. And I think it might open up the threshold for the side to side a little Just bit a more little bit. too. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think you might, the limited bank angles, uh, let's call that, yeah, it's a little bit tighter. It looks like, let's see this way. See, it's like almost on its side. Now let's go to beginner. Now we'll do the same. It might be like 10 degrees a more. Much, a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, it's not huge, but then in beginner mode, guys, or in expert mode, it's just sort of like insane mode because you can do whatever you want, but it's kind of like flyby suggestion mode. Yeah. And for that reason, I would suggest that you stay out of it unless you're a more experienced pilot. And definitely, you know, there's like, if there's expo, I can't feel it. And I would just prefer to have stabilization and not auto leveling. You know what I mean? Jeez. I was trying to land on the siding and it didn't work. <laughs> did, did you say? Trying put, to land on me. I put the mains. I, put the, <laughs> I know. Well, that's what happens when you don't get out of the way. You gotta be Johnny on the spot when you film for me, camera crew. Okay, all right. So guys, in closing, really cool product. I'm always impressed when they work well, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest is when you go to consider a little 400 millimeter Warbird, just remember a couple of things. First of all, make sure you get enough batteries. Also, I just wanna talk about this. If you ever have this where it pushes in like that because you like ran into something hard, you can literally pull it back out a little bit and then it'll free, okay? You see what I just did there? I just literally pulled that out. And you see my prop, it's not even square. That's so terrible. You see how it's wiggling? Not even close. That one's back, that one's fourth. There we go. Now it's better. And all I'm doing is I'm just lining up and looking for that yellow tip to see if it overlaps. And it does now. So really fun little plane. Uh, definitely not gonna be hobby grade, you know, AS, 3X and safe type of, uh, you know, hobby grade experience. But definitely fun. Definitely gonna give you an idea of what it's like to fly but it's gonna be in a way that's very, you know, like I'm just gonna throw this in the air and like, I don't care cause it's fine. It's not gonna get hurt. Right. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed it, but it kept itself level as it was flying. So that's what auto leveling, that's the beauty of auto leveling. And when you're brand new pilot, in fact, I'm gonna go kick it or something again, <laughs> because these things are so much, they're so much fun and they're so strong and they're sturdy. The only thing you have to worry about is the paint job, okay? So the paint job, of course, I'm gonna try to crash this again. I'm not gonna look. So as you can see, it's like a cat always lands on its feet. Maybe that's what cats have gyros. Yeah, that's what Auto leveling cats. Definitely. So Volantix, good job. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comments below. We're gonna wrap this thing up and get to the Unbox Build Radio setup if you wanna see that. Stay tuned right now. Also, if you wanna support us, buy these things from the link in the video description below. That helps us support us financially with small contributions from them, not you, which is kind of nice. Also known as being an affiliate. Uh, but we don't like you guys to buy things just because you want to support us. I want you to buy them because you love them. And if you don't love them or if you think we've helped to convince you that it's an all right product, then definitely buy from the links. Now, if you don't like this product and you want a bigger, uh, you know, P51 from FMS or E-Flight or something like that, we have done tons of them. And it's like, honestly... I think there's been one P51 we didn't like. Maybe another one that was small like this, we weren't crazy about, it's beeping at me again. Maybe that's a low battery. Maybe it? that's low battery, I don't know. Well, it's something, it just keeps beeping. So that being said, this one's pretty good. So I would definitely say if you're brand new to the hobby and you want something to play with, but you don't have the budget for the hobby grade experience, this will get you in the air. It's really fun. They're definitely lights. So you don't got to worry about a bunch of rules you have to follow or remote ID or any of that crap. It's just a, a fun little toy. It's going to get you in the air. So definitely consider it. Now, if you don't want to buy this thing and you want to buy something else, you can go to brianphillipsrc.com and you can sort by type, manufacturer, um, or like hobby shop or distributor, whoever we're working with at the time. And that'll help you to know what's up. And so you can make your decision there as well. And maybe you'll find like, you know, 14 other 400 millimeter Warbirds, just saying. 
and you can make your decision on which one you like best. But that being said, check out the link, follow the link. You should be able to find some more stuff right there that's easy. Now, if you wanna buy props or if you need a manual, something like that, there's something I almost never mention and I should mention it because occasionally I have to mention it in the comments uh, when replying to questions. And that is, you know, Brian, I need to know the motor size or the prop size or the prop, spare prop or whatever. If you check out the links, follow the link, it'll take you to the website where you'd be able to buy this, but then the specs and stuff are there too. Mm -hmm. So like if we fail to mention it or if we mention it and it changes, or maybe we mentioned ours came with three batteries and you're like, how many did it come with? I couldn't remember. Well, ours came with three, but you may be able to order it with two or one because you've already got, you know, like 400 batteries for this style, okay? Because this came with a 400 millimeter, or excuse me, 400 milliamp hour 1S packs and a charger, okay? And we got ours in our ready to fly finish. So for you, you might be using an open TX type transmitter and you might wanna just go ahead and try to bind it. I think it's V7, 14 or 15 or something like that. I forget what the protocol is. Um, and honestly, I don't wanna say it because I'm not 100% sure, but you could start there guessing. Uh, that being said, the ready to fly transmitters have all the same uh, strengths and weaknesses that we've seen in every other 400 millimeter that is kind of cheap light duty but once you get a couple of batteries in there it makes it twice as heavy <laughs> <laughs> so it's not quite so bad that being said you know i'm not going to write home about this thing it's just it does what it does and it does an all right job um and it's not like it's got to have an excessively huge wrench just be careful if you're brand new and you've got wind whipping this way and you take off and you let it get that far and it can't overwhelm the speed of the wind you see how fast it was it wasn't that fast the wind will carry it away. We call that a flyaway. Get into expert mode and point that thing in the ground. It's not gonna hurt itself that much. Just try not to end up in a neighbor's house or the tree or something like that. It's a lot harder to get them back then. But just remember, all the way to expert, point that thing down, get that thing to the ground and go find it and make sure you shut off your throttle before you go chasing after it, okay? So those are tips for beginner pilots. And also, if you want to support us in other ways, maybe you're not into this plane, you just don't have the budget for a new plane right now, which I am sorry, because there's always awesome planes. You can help us with super thanks. YouTube members, that's a monthly thing. Patreon monthly thing also gives you a little bit of an access to us for comments, a little easier for me to get in touch with you. And then also we have PayPal. Just remember we're friends and family, because who wants to give them extra money? That's about it, guys. That should pretty much cover the major details on this product. We like it, just like we've liked the other 400 millimeter Warbirds that we've done in the past. We have done a few that have been a little bit terrible. We've done a few that have been good, and then we've done a few that are somewhere in the middle. This one is definitely on the good side of things, okay? Mm -hmm. It's definitely not terrible. And it's definitely not going to give you the full hobby grade experience, but none of them have. Okay. Right. You can get into uh, UMX planes and get a true hobby grade experience, but you're going to spend a lot more money. And you also have to have a better transmitter than this. Mm -hmm. So we show those too, if you're curious. Ultra Micro Extreme is what that stands for. And that would be from a competitive brand. But these things are very good and cheap. And also, I believe this distributor might have some sort of worldwide shipping arrangement. Yeah, you should have some more better shipping options than... More worldwide yeah. than some of the other choices. Okay, mm -hmm. so hopefully we've answered all your questions, guys. Check them out at your leisure from following the link. And that is, after all, how we make this thing happen. Oh, and by the way, quick update before we go inside. Super quick. The pond. We have almost got our initial submission for permitting done almost we've been telling that should that for no i know but it's supposed <laughs> to happen this week yeah. or excuse me at the beginning of next week we'll have our first set of drawings hopefully this friday and we will be able to look at them and say i like it so much i want you to send it to the people that can say no but they already kind of know about it so they're aware of it and it should be a kind of a the skids have already been greased so to speak and all it took was just a lot a lot, a lot, a lot of money to do those and things a long from engineering. Long time. But that being said, we're going to keep you appraised of it. And yes, some of you have asked, are you going to share about the pond? Yes. So if you're watching this in like seven years, we didn't have a pond, but now there is a pond. And like when the power lines were here and you're like, where'd your power lines go? Did they run away? <laughs> no, we buried them, obviously. And there's a transformer there now. It used to be up at the top of the pole. 
but now those are gone because I don't want to die hitting them. It actually didn't have to do so much with the radio control. It had more to do with the manned aircraft, which is going to be after the pond's done and the helipad and the damn runway and the damn gift shop. And then across this, this, the other side of the ocean will be the full scale strip. But in the meantime, we also have PPG going on and that's why those have been buried. So I don't catch on fire and burst into flames. And even though my wife would think it was funny at first, <laughs> she'd be like, ah, I gotta pay for all this crap now. So, yeah, <laughs> see who's laughing now. Ooh, that would smell bad. Um, so anyway, guys, that's why we did that. And all joking aside, we appreciate you guys being a part of it. And we will do some footage around the pond. Not sure how it's gonna go in the steps between now and when they break ground, but we hope to do some time lapse or at least some, you know, kind of quick walk arounds. So if you wanna check that out, stay tuned. And if you haven't already smashed the like button, obviously smash the like button, because obviously when you smash the like button, you are voting on whether or not you like that plane. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't vote on whether you like the plane. The smashing the like button has to do with us and our presentation and whether or not you like what we're doing in the RC community, which is reviewing stuff so you don't have to buy stuff that turns out to be garbage. And also bringing you guys early releases so you can quickly make a decision if you think it's any value to you in your RC career. And then also helping people get back into the hobby that are sitting on the sidelines watching all the amazing planes that we fly. We want you back in the hobby with us today, not tomorrow. Beer truck could take you out. Just remember, that's all I got to say. All right, guys, we're gonna go straight into the unbox. Stay tuned right now. YouTube, it's been a while. We're gonna open this right now from Belantix RC. This is gonna be that one. As you can see from the side of the box here, or excuse me, it's the red, it's the red one, okay? So this is a Warbird 400 millimeter size class. They also have F4U Corsairs, as you can see from this side of the box. And also from right there, you can see a couple of different trim liveries, okay? So I believe we're gonna pop this open right now. This should be a pretty easy unboxing. And we have had a number of different 400 millimeter Warbirds and we've had good luck with some and not so good luck with others. So we're hoping with Volantix we'll have good luck. Okay, so here it is. And I think this is kind of like a V2. They have the Boskage warning. Oh, good. If you could read that for the them right boskage, there. Boskage, yes. Fly in spacious grounds without obstacles and Boskage. Never fly near highway, railway, high tension line, crowded people, flying area and residential area. Don't never fly near a flying area. I think they mean uh, like an airport. airport. This plane is designed to be flew outdoors only. Flew? You can only flew mm -hmm. outdoors. Okay. Thank you, Volantex, for that elaborate explanation of made up things. Good Lord. Look at all this stuff. Wow. There's like tons of stuff. Oh, four bladed oh, props. Cool. Super cool. And lots of them. And two bladed props. And already on the plane, two bladed props. I'm just getting the stuff off of the bottom. Okay, so we've got these quick detach props. You can see how there's a little ring around there. We'll show you how that works here in a minute. And then we have a charger. Ooh, charger. We're gonna get into charging right away. And it looks like a couple of additional spare batteries that have not been secretly hidden in the fuse. What size do we have? These are 400 milliamps at, and they are 1S, so one cell in series. Yes, I know that seems a little bit intuitive, so one cell in series here, guys. We're gonna show you how to charge these things. I know it seems kind of lame starting with batteries, but people need help with batteries because batteries are one of the two safety concerns with airplanes. That would be LiPos. These are LiPos, okay? We have a little Molex connector here. You can see there's polarity within red and black. Since it's one cell, there's only one. This is the charger we use. This is the charger that's going to be provided with your plane. Okay, because this is what we call a ready to fly. Ooh, nice squishy pairs. Look at that, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's on a rim, see? It's so like technically that would come off of there if you want. And these are quick removable and toolless removable. So we're opening this up again. It's a third battery, by the way, if you're keeping track. 
So we've got all sorts of really nice free bags too that come with oh, this plane. Look, good. one, two, and three. Yay. So this is a screw on coupler for the prop, as you can see right here. Okay, so these things actually thread on to the motor shaft and then they quick release the props, which I'll show you in a minute here. So they give you a spare. And of course we got a little charger here. This thing actually has some writing on it. I'm gonna try to read it. I can't read it from down there, sorry. 3.7 at 0.5 amps. So you're gonna charge just a little bit over one S or one C rather. Uh, that just speaks to this, the charge rate. Okay, so we can un twisty tie that. This is not provided. So you'll have to provide your own USB-A charging port. And then this will plug in just like that, okay? So once you charge this in, or once you plug it in, it's gonna go to a red light. My guess is that light will shut off. Now, if you wanna charge it another way, we've had really good luck with these. Again, not included, but they have the Molex plug here, uh, UMX, that would be a micro pH, I believe, and then a pH 2.0 and a JST style. Then you click and you scroll in the speed that you wanna charge at. So we'll charge this one at 0.4 amps. Press and hold it. It's gonna start and then give you feedback on the voltage of the pack at the moment. And then of course we got one more. So I'll actually charge this a little bit faster so it's ready to go when we're ready to actually get this thing plugged in. So I'm gonna charge this at about two times or 0.8 amps, okay? So you can see that's gonna start. It's actually got a little bit higher voltage as it starts. Now, just to keep in mind, this is not included, but it's something that if you're gonna have planes like this, you're gonna wanna have a lot of batteries mm -hmm. like this, and it's gonna help you burn through your batteries quicker. And when you've got kids that are flying and flying and flying, it's gonna work really good for you. So anyway, just take my word for it. If you get two or three of these planes, and you like to go out and fly with the kids, you're gonna to wanna to get a faster charger. The provided chargers are fine, but they just are slow. And there's okay. only one of them. That's right, even though you may come with multiple batteries mm -hmm. in your plane. Okay, so we're taking these little foam inserts out. Looks, looks pretty good. Nice. Oh, it's the Obsession. We've had the Obsession before. I remember we had a 750 millimeter that was an Obsession livery. Okay, so, all right, so we have the centrally located singular servo for the ailerons. We have a removable tailwheel, squishy tire as well, but not steering. We do have a rudder, we do have an elevator, and we do have ailerons, but this is going to be a four channel. And the canopy doesn't come off on this one. So when you open this, you're gonna be able to install your battery. So it goes right there. And you see how that thing is buried in there. I always hate when they do that because it makes it very difficult to get the lead out. And guys, keep this thing so you can transport your plane if you'd like. It's very easy to do, provided you don't have your landing gear on. Okay, so the Atlantix style remote. There's no push button here on the stick itself. So this will be the elevator and ailerons. So it goes, makes your plane go up, makes your plane go down. Roll to the left, roll to the right. Yaw to the left, okay, so what I mean by that is up, down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right, throttle, less throttle, okay? And then one touch aerobatics plus down stick completes a loop regardless of mode. One touch aerobatics to the right or to the left would roll to the left, one touch plus to the right would roll to the right. Now keep in mind, it's going to execute the entire command. So if you press the button and you tell it to roll to the right and then you're like, please, no, 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 just turn right. Well, it's not gonna turn right, it's gonna execute the maneuver and then you'll be able to sort of like cross talk with that conversation on the flight controller. So if there's a tree coming up, don't sacrifice your plane to test it. Test it in the wide open spaces and no boskage. Right. Obviously. Obviously. Okay, so real quick, spinner is attached. Pretty bad match on color here, I would say. Actually, it's a terrible match, but that's okay. I don't really care that much about the color. And then as you can see, that thing pops off. This is a 130 by 70 millimeters. And you can see how this looks 
just like the little part that they provided. So now one thing I do and you should do too is obviously keep these bags forever. Yes. But, um, you know, and because there's, you never know when you're gonna need them. But in the meantime, between now and forever, you wanna make sure that you keep this handy. And what I do is I put all the props for a given plane together, and that's gonna make it a lot easier to find them when you crash your plane or your kids crash into the garage door or whatever it happens to be, okay? So real quick, we'll show you what the four-bladed props do. I put, put that in the bag. So four-bladed prop looks sweet, I think. I'm gonna definitely go with the four-bladed prop. That looks so much cooler if you ask me. It's probably gonna be a little bit less on the performance end, but it's gonna help with clearance on the prop because that is one thing we've run into on these. By the way, putting these landing gear is usually pretty simple. You just find the appropriate one and I'll show you which one that is here in a minute. That paint is kind of sticky when you slide into this. Okay, so let's pop that in. It kind of snaps, okay. And you wanna get your wheelbase as wide as possible and leaning forward toward the front of your plane, okay? See how that works? So it's leaning forward. Now, of course, that's gonna be snapped when you've got your battery in there. Looks pretty sweet, I think. So we'll go ahead and review it with the four-bladed prop. And the understanding would be, guys, that you can, of course, do a two-bladed prop as well. But just remember, once you roll onto your mains to take off, you see how much clearance you have now? With your two-bladed prop, you would have long since had a prop strike. So I'm excited about that. And that is something we ran into with our Ishin offerings in this same size class, the 400 millimeters, which of course speaks to the wingspan here, okay? They would lean forward and hit the prop on the ground really bad, okay? So we've talked about the direction of travel. These are trim for rudder, uh, trim for throttle, I guess, except actually that's how you set your there might be a one-touch U-turn. Do they have the one-touch U-turn? Stupidest, yep, one key aerobatic, but I don't see anything about one-touch U-turn. Good, because it's a stupid feature anyway. This is gonna be trim up or trim down for your elevator. So just the direction that you would move the stick, that corresponds to the trim. Very cheap feeling remote. Not uncommon in this, it's very light. There's not much to them and very, very cheap feeling gimbals. The cool thing is if you get the right protocol, you should be able to go ahead and bind this to an open TX transmitter. Remember, all you have to do is get that extra channel for this and then the channel for your expert mode, your mid-level mode, and your beginner mode. Now, I don't know which way is up. I'm assuming experts all the way out and beginners all the way toward us, okay? So all the way out, and I'm assuming that from the arrow, mm -hmm. okay? So all the way toward us, we want to start there. And a lot of times these things aren't balanced super well, and so what we do is we fly them Hey, do you have any uh, double A's camera crew? Yeah, I just She does, she keeps those, those in her pocket. Crew. Okay, so we get the world's cheapest double A's because we go through about four trillion of these a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you buy these, if you buy like Duracell or Energizer or like, what's the other ones uh, that are like decent quality? I don't know. Brailleback. Know those. <laughs> these ones are from uh, Harbor Freight. They're the extreme cheap skate style. <laughs> they like pay you. To they take pay them. you to take them. It's actually like a hazardous waste thing. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So you turn that on. Okay. So you got a flashing light and then it goes solid. Now it won't arm until you're all the way up and all the way down. Okay. And then it just works like normal. Beep feedback. That beep is gonna tell you about how long it's waiting for the input, okay? And then beyond that, there is a little hook point for a lanyard if you need to use a lanyard. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Now, in most airplane applications, we do a lot of fixed wing airplanes here on Brian Phillips RC. As you can see, the living room is full of airplanes. And then obviously, the kitchen is full of airplanes. And there's other rooms in this house that are full of airplanes as well. Uh, they just aren't this room, like called downstairs, and then also that room, and sometimes the bedroom, depending on if we have people visiting and we need to use our tables. But that's what we do here predominantly on Brian Phillips RC, is we fly fixed wing airplanes, we unbox these things, we show you exactly what they're made of, and if they're going to be flexible enough for you to think it's an, an appropriate fit, for you at your skill level. Also, this thing is reinforced here. It's hidden well, but it's reinforced all the way down the length, minus this last about an inch or so. Same thing on the horizontal stab, same thing on the actual elevator. I don't think there's any reinforcement in the rudder itself, 
but nice thick controls. And this is just the style that you'll pinch this or you'll take two needle nose pliers and stretch it apart to make your mechanical trim adjustments, okay? If you don't have enough trim on this, you'll eventually get to the top of the range and it'll stop, okay? And then you'll have to trim it back to the middle and then adjust this to wherever you saw the position being, okay? So you don't necessarily wanna see this square, but you might wanna kinda of start there, okay? But then after you land, you realize, okay, we need it to be up a little bit to just fly straight for takeoff, and we might need a little down to actually fly straight after the first takeoff. You just make those adjustments. But what we do here on this channel is we show these, oh, by the way, did I show you the little pilot? They've got this little oh. two-dimensional pilot. It's a little bit, a little bit lame, but it's kind of cool. From the side, cute. he looks kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, he looks just a, a little bit flat. It's a little skinny. Yeah. So what we do is we unbox these things. We show you how they work. You can make up your mind if it's really worth the money, okay? For lack of better terms. And if you're ever curious about how much these things cost, we try not to talk about it a lot because the prices do change from time to time. And since we leave our videos up for years, we have some of our videos have been running for over nine years, the prices will change. So check the links in the video description below when you follow the links and if you decide to buy, then we'll get some small commissions from the purchase of those planes. But if you don't like this plane, we never want you to feel compelled to purchase something you don't like and why would you do that anyway? But believe me, if you don't like this one, we've reviewed the one you do like. And if we haven't, it's coming soon, okay? Because we do just about every plane here on Brian Phillips RC. And if we aren't, we're working on it. So that being said, we appreciate you guys doing that. That helps to fund our channel. And then also it helps you to understand that because we do all of them, we aren't married to this brand or that brand or the other brand or the other hobby shop or the other distributor. We really don't care which one you pick. We just want to show them how they work in a common environment. So you can make your decision without having to spend your own hard earned money. You can let us show whether the thing works. And also because we have a plethora of experience with different models, just like this. And if you're brand new to the hobby, we can say, you know what? This one's maybe not so good. Or maybe this one's amazing. It's the best we've ever seen. Or we could say, you know what, this meets the normal criteria for this size class, or maybe it's easier to see, or maybe it's a little bit faster than the competitive offering. But that's what we try to help you sort through on Brian Phillips RC. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to smash the like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video, or if we helped you answer a technical question. Or alternatively, if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications because we're doing footage all the time guys now you've already seen this thing fly at the beginning of the video that's the way we do our format so you can kind of see how it comes out of the box in the unbox build radio setup on some of the cars we just drive them right away because the unboxes are like a short where my wife's hands are building and i pretend it was me <laughs> but generally speaking i don't paint my nails anymore they stop me from doing that um, but the thing is we do love reviewing these things and we love that you guys are here and helping us to find success. So the best way you can do that is by buying the planes when you enjoy what you see on our channel and how they flew out there for your very own eyes to see, okay? Now, if you have questions, always feel free to leave them in the comments below, but just understanding that because we get so many of them, I can't always make it to the comments in time, but you have a great resource here on Brian Phillips RC because we've had thousands and thousands of other videos Chances are you can go to Brian Phillips RC and check and see what the competitive offerings are or were. In this size class, keep in mind, this one has been made by what, like five or six competitive brands yeah. while we've been doing this channel, okay? So it's not gonna be the first or last time that they change names. I don't know if that's because the, you know, the Chinese companies you know, get sued out of existence or if they've infringed on some copyright violation or they just literally change your name to, you know, conveniently chase uh, away some sort of a legal action against them. It's so strange how all these things have to do with the companies being sued. Add more consonants to their name. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Un unpronounceable consonants, yes. no less. But this is what we have learned on Brian Phillips RC over the years of doing this that there are gonna be winners and there are sometimes losers. And 
you don't necessarily have to be the one to vet that product. Now, that doesn't mean that if I don't love it, it's not an all right product, and we try to give you guys the tiebreakers when they're questionable. Now, when they're really bad, we let you know. When they're really good, we let you know too, okay? So, and also, no BS. We try not to do that. We don't do the fastest, cheapest, best. That's just a waste of your time. All right, so charging. We're at 4.2 volts. Let's look. 4.2 volts and 4.2 but they're both still charging. Now this one also is charging. You can see the red lights on. Why don't we grab a voltage alarm? This is another tool that doesn't come with this plane, but I'm just show you real quick. On the provided charger, we'll go negative to this side because that's where the negative pin goes. And yes, you can actually test your one cell packs, but you wouldn't fly with it. So it's at 4.1 or 4.10, okay? So this one needs to go for a little bit longer. So if you were a brand new, First time pilot, would you consider a plane like this, camera crew? Questionable. Maybe. You have to wait and see how it flies. <laughs> Meaning, you've already seen it, but we haven't, so I'm not gonna make a recommendation until I've flown it. Now also, you can look at our windsock out here. It's kind of showing a little bit of movement. I would say that that's probably, you know, like five to 10 miles an hour. That's about what you wanna fly these things in. If it's too much more windy, you're gonna be able to get out of control to where it will be pushed by the wind so fast that you can't get back to yourself, okay? So if you have a plane that goes 150 miles an hour and the wind is 100 miles an hour, then you could technically fly in that wind. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, <laughs> but let's say you have a 20 mile an hour wind day and this thing goes 18 miles an hour. The fear is you get into the air and the ground speed is two miles an hour minus, meaning it's getting blown away from you, okay? So fly upwind, and then if you have a problem, you can bring it back to yourself. Again, that's a skill you can develop over time as you get a little bit better into the hobby. But generally, you don't want to fly in high wind because the wind will push us out of the way and it's going to be doing things that the gyro can't keep up. And here's the thing, these planes, they have this magical ability to automatically level. When you let go of the sticks, the plane will just come to a level Stand still like this. They might even overcorrect a little bit and then shake like this. That's called oscillation or overcorrection. It's not gonna be that excessive, but the thing is you might see a little bit of, little bit of wiggle on the wings, especially like this. You're gonna see a little bit like that. And that's because the gyro is inexpensive and not well-tuned. Whereas you have a gyro that's expensive and well-tuned on a plane like this. This just happens to be an F7F. Really beautiful plane, but also high dollar. And that's what we're gonna bring you here on Brand Phillips RC, is we're gonna give, give you some experience that maybe you don't have, or maybe you do have. And so you'll understand that when I say things like that, you'll get it. Or like this, seven, you know, we've got this- uh, The SR71. SR71 that's parked here. Of course, that's a considerably more expensive package. And as you can see, it's got twin EDFs, but you can see the size class is similar. I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing is not as easy to fly as this, okay? or at least I don't expect it to be based on past experience. So, and then we got a couple down here from Top RC that we haven't had as great of an experience with, to be perfectly frank. So I'm hoping this one does great, but those are all in the repertoire here at Brian Phillips RC. So if you wanna find a side-by-side -side comparison, all you have to do is go over to the Brian Phillips RC. There's a tab where you can look by type, whether it be like float plane, general aviation, um, you know, airliners, stop me if I say it wrong, warbirds, this sort of thing, jets, mm -hmm. or you can go by manufacturer like FMS, Volantex, E-Fly, e you know, this sort of thing. And all you have to do is RC going in this case, all you have to do is just find the plane that wets your whistle and then check it out. You can compare this to that, okay? So these are questions that we have gotten hundreds of times, if not thousands, and we try to answer them as we go through the videos. But also when we work with good vendors that take good care of us, we assume they're gonna take good care of you. And if they don't take good care of you, we generally hear about it. And that's why we sometimes kind of distance ourselves a little bit from vendors that don't do such a great job, okay? And so that's why we have been really happy to be working with this particular vendor which is RC going. So check it out. There's links in the video description below. Now, if you're watching this in seven or eight years, maybe we've had a separating of uh, directions. Maybe they stopped selling this particular product and they've picked up a different line. So we'll try to keep links active for you because at the end of the day, we do work for you. Even though we work with these different brands, we're doing it in support of a hobby 
for people that are just getting in a hobby or people that are coming back to the hobby from a hiatus. Maybe they had some kids and they were you know, busy with their young children and so now they're coming back to it now that the kids have moved out or they're retired from a career that was very demanding and now they have time all of a sudden to get back into flying. Or you're brand new and you just skip that whole first step where you enjoyed it as a childhood and now you're an adult saying, Brian, I need help. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. You're in the right place. So we're glad to have you here. Welcome to Brian Phillips RC. All right, so power's on. I was giving this stuff a chance to charge. Let's just assume that this one's done. You can click. It's off, okay? So I'm unplugging this. And all we have to do to get this thing ready to fly is very simple is we're gonna open that up and you see the first time we do this might be a little bit of a pain because it's so far down there. I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver or whatever you got lying around. Usually you can get it with the battery itself if it's like really close to the lid, okay? Let me just grab that, pull that out. Now, once we're done with that, we won't hopefully have that same conflict. Oh, and then by the way, there is a certain amount of subjectivity when we review these planes. We try to keep that to a minimum or at least explain our subjective position, the reds toward the camera crew. So I'm gonna hold this. You see on my hand is not gonna get cut by the prop if it would start, but I do have to put this at the front. Okay, I'm gonna lay it down, leave it. Let the gyro stabilize, everything goes to a level position. Nothing's moving and at this point I'm gonna pick up and you can hear it kind of jiggle and wiggle. Then I'm gonna just slide this in. You can see there's kind of a pocket that's designed to receive this battery. And so I, you see this is up on top. I don't necessarily wanna crush the cable or damage the connections. So I'm gonna sort of slide that in there gently and just lay that to the side. This is a silicone covered cable so it's very supple and soft. Okay, so it's very easy to manipulate there. Okay, now this one says full, just so you know, and obviously the one that was provided with the plane is still charging, okay? Actually, the light just went oh, off. Oh, the light just went off? Yep. Cool, okay, so let's see what it is. So the positive is going to be on this side, so let's see what we got. That would be crazy. It still says 4.09, 4 or 4.09, did it just like not start? Maybe I never actually got it started. Maybe, oh, maybe I unplugged it. Did I unplug the thing? I don't see any color. There it goes. I had to reset it. So anyway, guys, that's gonna be charging for a little bit. And we hope that we've answered most of your questions in this Unbox Build radio setup. And obviously we're not building, we're not doing much radio setup. And you also see that I bumped the throttle stick and it didn't run. That's because you have to put the stick all the way up and all the way down to arm it that will cut you, so be careful, okay? So roll left, roll right. So that's gonna push this wing down. It's gonna pull this wing up, so it should move like that. And then move like that, okay? So you can see that's gonna push this one up and pull that one down, okay? Elevator up, it's gonna push the nose up. It's gonna push the nose down. Y'all left, y'all right, pretty cool. Now, you can tell that there's gonna be more movement. I'm gonna hold the stick down here when you're in expert mode. Nope, not on this style. Okay, so now when you're an expert, there's no correction. When you're in middle, there's correction, but it's gonna allow you to flip over one direction or one direction. I can't remember which way, but then in beginner, it's gonna limit how far you can roll and it's gonna correct. You see the rudder kind of, here, I'll probably have to hold this, okay? So looking at the rudder, as I move the plane, it's called a gyro and you see, it's just moving the tail to resist. And the same thing with the elevator. Up, down, up. There's not much movement there. And then roll, roll. It goes the opposite direction. And just to be clear, there's the transmitter down there. Now, the other thing you can do is you can flip this plane upside down and look at this. the servos are gonna try to bring it to a level condition. You can also look at this. So when you let go of the sticks, it's gonna wanna bring the plane level. Now, you can also take and move the stick all the way to the right and you can see how much it's going to let you roll it because that's where it's gonna stop and it's not gonna go any further, okay? Because you can look at that aileron and it's not moving any further. So that's the limit of the bank angle. So now it's gonna bring it back level. So let's check how far we can go up. Pull back on the stick, that's where it's gonna stop. Now push down on the stick, that's where it's gonna stop. You see how it just levels out, mm -hmm. okay? So that's what it's gonna do. But then when you go into middle mode, where the stick is in the middle, pull back, it looks like it's gonna let you flip upside down, but only with the elevator. Now I'm gonna to try to roll. It's still gonna stop you about there, okay? 
So that's a cool way that you can test your surfaces and the stabilizer in these cool little offerings. So really fun. This is not gonna be a hobby grade experience like something like this or this big one down here, but it's still gonna be really fun. Now, to get a more hobby grade experience, you don't have to have a bigger plane, but these are great for people that don't have a huge budget to spend on an entry level plane. And so we love to promote this type of product, even though we understand it's not really competitive with this type of flight experience or this Aero <laughs> Commander. This Aero Commander is quite a bit more expensive. It's probably double to triple the cost, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you know, or some of the planes in the background, we've got, you know, an F-18 that's not that much bigger, but it's far more complicated, a lot more money. You've got a Viper over here. You've got a Futura. You've got a, you know, an, another Viper. Another Viper. There's... What is this, an ASW 2020? Oh no, I forget, AS, what is that that's one? Oh, that's a Fox, yeah, yeah Fox 2.3, uh, P51 1.5. There's so many different types of planes. And really, if this is what gets you started and you realize, you know what? I like the way it went. I'm ready to bite the bullet and spend a little bit more money on something bigger. We're here to help get you involved because at the end of the day, if you need somebody to push you off the chair into the flying field, that's what we're trying to do here. And if it takes a cheap entry level type plane like this to get you in the air, that's what we're gonna do. So we hope that we connected with you on that regard here at Brian Phillips RC. And we hope that you'll come back and watch more because this is just literally the tip of the iceberg, guys. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned, so much more to come. And if you wanna buy one of these, remember, you can buy it from the links in the video description below, and that does financially support us because we're affiliates of these companies. That doesn't make us say this is amazing, and it doesn't make us say this is amazing, okay? What makes us say it's amazing is if we have an amazing experience. And what makes us say this thing sucks is if it does suck. But you can still buy them because some people like planes for different reasons, and we are not so set in our ways that we can't understand that because some people maybe has a very tight budget and maybe some people this is too cheap for them i know that seems unusual <laughs> but it's true there's it people is. that are spending a lot more than that plane yep. so we're here to help facilitate everybody in the hobby and if you don't get started you're never going to get to where this is too ex too inexpensive okay because <laughs> most people don't start with something like that it's a pretty sweet plane by the way um, okay, so what have I missed? Oh yeah, if you wanna support us in other ways, you just don't want this plane or maybe you're beyond it, uh, but we've resonated in some way. We have super thanks on YouTube, just like one-time donations. Then we have a YouTube membership. You can become one of our members. I think we're up to like nine regular nine members, but we've had other supporters. Mm -hmm. And so I think it says like 13 or something like that. So it's just a new thing for us here on this channel. Then we have Patreon, which does give you my ear a little bit easier because of the way they manipulate the comments into my feed it's easier for me to get back to you, okay? That is not a written offer of communication because that would mean that a VAT has to be added. Mm -hmm. For those of you in America, that's a value added tax that gets added to people's bill overseas. We don't do that, okay? So it's, it's not listed. It's not a benefit. Yep, that's right. It's not a benefit, no soup for no. you. Uh, and then we also have PayPal. Mm -hmm. If you're into that, but just remember we're friends and family as far as we're concerned. And, uh, but we still think firmly the best way to support Ryan Phillips RC because it helps us to build relationships with the vendors is find something you love, buy it through our links and you'll support us financially in that way. And then you win, we win, and the manufacturer wins because they're selling products, okay? So that's the best way to do it. And plus then that helps to get us a little bit in our back pocket for the time that we spend following up on comments and getting people up to speed, just like you would if you went to your local hobby shop and said, I want this F7F, and you bought it off their shelf, okay? So that's how that works. Pretty basic stuff. We don't mean to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. We are very transparent on Brian Phillips RC because at the end of the day, we just want people flying like crazy and buying these amazing products. We don't really care which one you get. We just want you to get it and get it in the air. So thanks for watching, guys. So much more coming.